My name is Mary Hill. I'm a teacher at Howard in Oakland. And I've seen uh, in the time that I've been working in, at, uh, in Oakland how charter schools have siphoned off a lot of the students who have been attending traditional schools and some who would have attended traditional schools had they not been taken by charter schools. The problem with our charters is that they tend to find ways to weed out students who have behavior issues or academic problems and those... Do you think public money should be going to charters? Oh, no, I actually don't, I, I, because a lot of the charters are privately controlled, so I don't think that they should be getting public money that could be helping students in our traditional public schools. Linda Tapia. You're a teacher? Yes, I am, a first grade teacher at Manzanita Seaton. <laughs> Not enrollment doesn't fix the problem. Exactly, it doesn't. It creates a problem. It feeds more students into um, charter schools and takes students out of the regular neighborhood public school. And that's what our goal is, to improve the neighborhood public school, not to feed into this idea that a charter school would improve education. I'm a first grade teacher at Montclair Elementary. Um, as far as the common enrollment, what my yeah, concerns are. Enrollment. What is the state of education in, in, in Oakland? Are you concerned about these charters and what they're doing in Oakland? Well, um, my concern is that since since I moved to Oakland um, in 2008, uh, I've been a, you know I wasn't a teacher right away, um, but I was I knew a lot of teachers, and the pattern that I've seen as a volunteer and as a substitute teacher and now as a teacher is that you have all of these schools that used to be public schools that closed down, and when they reopen their charter. And so it started to look to me, and I'm sure other people, like they're slowly doing away with public education and reopening them as charter schools um, in the name of improving public, public education. So rather than taking these schools that are, may have some issues um, or that have low enrollment and trying to fix, figure out what, the, what needs to be addressed directly, they're closing them down and turning them over um, to these organizations, these uh, what I see as for-profit organizations. Um, what are some of these organizations, these for-profit organizations? Oh, um, Educate 78. I mean, they're technically non-profit, but the, there are people who, um, who are benefiting financially from having the appearance of turning around these schools, uh, for example, improving the, the property values in the surrounding neighborhoods, and then you know, there are the, these moneyed interests that sort of fund these nonprofits. I just did air quotes, um, in the interest of getting the payback from, you know, Im improving the schools temporarily. So it's profiteering. Yes, I, I believe it is, yes. I'm Carrie Anderson. I teach first grade at New Highland Academy. Uh, I think in the context of today, it means clearly defining what public education means. Um, I'm thinking about uh, Trisha's words a few minutes ago about uh, the deception and blurring the distinction. While in one sense charter schools are public schools, in another sense they're clearly not. Uh, they're not required to serve all students. They're not required to follow all laws that public schools are required to follow. And um, they lack the transparency that true public schools have. So it is not in the best interest of students and families to have that kind of deception. And how have public school students been hurt in Oakland by the opening of all these charter schools? How have they been hurt? Yeah, have they been hurt? Yeah, is money going to charter schools rather than public schools? Are they taking better students? Are they cherry pick students? Uh, the fact that they are able to have a selective enrollment process, they're not obligated to take each and every student that comes to their door, uh, means that they can, to a certain extent, decide which students they're going to serve and which students they're not. Um, particularly special education students are not served fully. Uh, Isn't that the law, that they have to be equally served, special education students? I believe it is the law, but I think that, um, you know, the way that things happen, uh, the way that students are either included or excluded from a school, you have a difference between what uh, people think is happening and what's actually happening. Uh, and certainly, when students leave Oakland Public Schools to go to charter schools, the public funding goes with them, and so there's less and less funds available in the public schools.
Now, there's efforts like in Los Angeles to make the whole district, Road Foundation wants to make the whole district charter. You think they would like that in Oakland? Well, uh, I mean, there are quite a few charter schools already in Oakland. If you look at nationally what's happening with privatizing education and the charter movement, um, there are financial interests. People are benefiting financially from it. So uh, within the system uh, where making money and making profits is what we value in this society, you can connect the dots, you know. So you don't think that that should be a part of public education? No. But profit? No. I do not think that profit should be part of public education. No, I don't. And uh, the lack of transparency, mm -hmm. uh, private boards running these schools, mm -hmm. charter schools, do you think they should be getting public funding? When, there's no, uh, when you don't have the transparency, you don't have really the public having any say on how these schools are run? No, I think we have a public system that has been set up so that the people, for example, our school board who are running our schools are accountable to the public. People can come to this meeting. We, we are, the meetings are open. They are elected. So there are ways in which our school board is held accountable. Uh, in the charter schools, you have a board of directors, um, many of whom have financial interests in the actual charter schools. You mean they have a conflict of interest? I think they have a conflict of interest, yes. It's Trish Gorham, president of Oakland Education Association tonight. Well, tonight the members of the Oakland Education Association have come to tell the board that common enrollment is a solution seeking an answer. Superintendent Wilson brought this scheme to Oakland when he first came in without any kind of understanding what our enrollment process is. He decided, along with a lot of reformsters across the nation, um, to have a common enrollment system where we have a one application for all schools, both charter and OUSD uh, public schools. The problem with that is that it is an absolute deception. It's a deception to the taxpayers, it's a deception who pay for these systems, and it's a deception to the parents who choose these systems. Everybody has a right to choose. However, trying to say that charter school systems have the same accountability, democratic processes, and transparency as OUSD schools is absolutely a lie. And we should not perpetuate, and the school board absolutely should not perpetuate, that they do not have significant differences. The, com the charter schools chose, they chose to be separate from the regulations, the accountability, and the democratic processes of a unified school district. That was their choice. That's fine. They now cannot say, well, I want to be a part of your system and your resources, but I still don't want to be accountable like your schools. That's not acceptable. Now, another issue is a, a, lot of, a lot of the charters also market. They're doing advertising and marketing to get students in their schools. Uh, is that, and yet, you know, I mean. Well, common enrollment is just another marketing ploy of those who think that schools are commodities and they are not. They're public service and they need to be maintained for the public good. We do not need little unique boutiques all over the city providing a hundred different ways to teach children. While there are advantages to having some um, unique programs within schools, it is the a responsibility of the school board to maintain a level playing field and a even floor for everybody and not have schools marketed like toothpaste. Now in Fremont tonight there's going to be a school board meeting and they're going to be opposing the uh, approval of a charter, the Gulen Charter Schools. Uh, uh, what is going on with, with this charter system? Well, it's, well, I mean, what is the Gulen system? The Gulen system is just a really scary kind of, um, I don't even know how it's come into the country, um, but it is a system that has only Turkish men ruling the schools um, and they are they're the largest charter school in the country and it's all run by a single uh, imam out of Turkey. Um, it's a 
it is bizarre that such a such a system could have gained such wide um, a wide hold on the charter industry. For sure, but I mean the whole charter industry is not monitored enough. For us, we see a scandal a week, practically. We see a school superintendent in Southern California has been indicted because while he was approving charters, now when he's um, out of the superintendency, charters come and give him their consulting business. So this kind of thing happens when you don't have a publicly accountable system. Right, not as a board member, but a student, along with another other students from my school, we stand outside in front of our uh, of the main office. We protested. We said our demands where we want OUSD to change the system the way how admins are being hired, right? Because we know on Article 12 for the teacher contract, there's you know there's a selection committee. We want the same for your admins, right? And also. <laughs> We, we want that to happen, and also our vice, our VP, vice president, I mean, vice principal Carson and one of our SSOs, Campbell, you know, we feel like they bring uh, such a negative vibe or culture into, right, into Prima because the way they, they decide to handle certain situations, I think it's not the best because they, I feel like Carson ex escalates, right, the situation, instead of like, you know, I'm the adult here, this is the, you know, way to act, right? Excuse me, in. student director Ramirez, I, I understand this, but we do have a meeting norm about no personal attacks, oh. and I feel like what you're saying right now is, is, is very personal, and, and I, I would ask if you could find a different way to express that. So. Please continue. Steve. Okay, ahead, thank you. So, you know, we feel like situation like this is not very safe for our school culture, right? And we were protesting about that. We also were demanding that, of course, to have a selection committee in our admin. And also, if that doesn't work out or if that is not approved or whatever, we want to have the trainings be mandatory, right? Be some special trainings on how staff members from the school are supposed to react to certain situations and what's the best thing to do, right? To like stay neutral and keep everybody safe. David DeLayu, I'm a science teacher at Oakland Tech High School. Common enrollment is something that the corporate billionaires across the country who want to change education are pushing uh, to have all the charters and all the public schools in a given city have a single enrollment system. And basically this is the public schools providing an enrollment system for charters. And the charter schools already do advertising to get people into their schools. Why do they want to be merged with the common enrollment system? Um, I mean, I think they they believe that any way they can, they want to increase their enrollment. That is their goal, and they think this will help accomplish it. The people sponsoring it also think it will help to sort of paper over the differences between charters and public schools and make it feel to parents like, oh, these are all just a set of choices that all belong together. And what are the differences? Well, the big difference is our charters don't have to take every student. Char many charters get large amounts of corporate funding in addition to their state public funding. Um, and, I mean, the central thing is that charters choose who they want to take, and they don't have to take all the kids. And that gives them an advantage in test scores and all kinds of other things, and it leaves the public schools with a disadvantage, and I don't think that's right. And, and how is the charters in Oakland, how many are there, and how has it affected the public schools in Oakland? Well, I think there are about 40 charters now, and we've lost roughly eight or 10,000 students to charters. And the unions have been trying to organize the charters. Uh, do you think that that's a successful means of stopping charters and privatization? 
No, I don't think that's a, that is not a way of stopping charters. It's a way of getting some kind of justice for the teachers who teach in those programs, which they absolutely deserve. It doesn't deal with the problem of uh, are charters really public schools or are they just getting public money to be run by private boards, which is how I feel about and, it. And who's profiting off of charters in Oakland? Well, the, the big profits are in selling services and renting property to the charters. They can't make a profit on paper, but they can sign lucrative contacts, contracts with testing agencies or with uh, landlords who, you know, essentially they make a deal. And an American Indian charter in particular had a setup like that where essentially a quarter of their budget was being siphoned off to pay for outrageous rents for their buildings owned by no other than the founder of the school. And is this common? Uh, uh, that, that was a particularly outrageous example, and OUSD attempted to shut them down, although they failed. Why did they fail? Uh, because the Alameda County Board of Education reauthorized them as soon as the district deauthorized them for fraud. So even though there was corruption, you're saying they're allowed the school to continue? They have, been, they have been allowed to continue. They were required to have the most corrupt individuals leave their board, but the school has maintained its existence. District, no to common, common enrollment. enrollment. Look, common enrollment is a solution in seeking an answer. The school superintendent brought this common enrollment to the district when he came. He didn't make a study and say, oh yeah, this will work. This will help our students in OUSD. It is a scheme that is happening all over the country in school districts that have been targeted by the corporate oligarchy for takeover and for charter school expansion. That's what common enrollment is. We don't have the numbers that we should have had today because we scheduled this when the school board thought that had scheduled a vote on this, uh, on this issue. We stopped that vote today. Why do they schedule it for the last meeting in June? Because they think you will have gone away and you won't be paying attention. We will be paying attention. We have many community groups that have already signed on to say, no, this is not what we want for OUSD students. And we will be there continually now and through June to make it go away. It is a deception. This isn't about whether you approve or disapprove of charter schools. This is a deception to the taxpayers that uh, pay for both systems and for the parents that enroll their students in both systems by saying they are just the same. There is no difference between charters and OUSD stu students, uh, schools. That is a lie, and we have information about that. And so we don't want the school board to deceive the parents into thinking enrolling their children in one school or the other has no consequences. People can make a choice, but we are not to blur the line and the distinction between two separate systems. One, democratically controlled, accountable to the state. One, privately controlled, accountable to no one. We're not public schools. Charter schools are not public schools. Charter schools are not public schools. Charter schools.